Hi guys. Well, as you can see in front of you, it is turning into springtime. It is a fine spring day in February down here in this undisclosed swamp. I hear some rumor that the rest of this country, such as Austin, Texas, are in some sort of deep freeze. But spring is busting out all over here in the Sunshine State on this lovely uh, 82 degree Friday, February 12th, 2021. Uh, so I am sitting here getting ready to do what I try to do every Friday and that's bring you my ecological meltdown roundup rant where I uh, check in with mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com for a their weekly laundry list of assaults against this planet uh, while the world remains distracted to the distraction. Uh, so let's start out where we all where we usually do down there in the Amazon drawing some dots. <coughs> While Dutch and Japanese pension funds pay for Amazon deforestation, well, pretty much everything, two pension funds in the Netherlands and one from Japan have invested a combined half a billion dollars in Brazil's top three meat packers. These investments in cattle ranching, an industry that is the main driver of Amazon deforestation, contradict the environmental stances of the respective funds and their national governments. Yes. Uh, anyway, we can take that story and multiply it times about a hundred thousand. Uh, man, the pollen season has begun. All of these different flowers. I think we have an airboat. Is it coming towards us or away from us? Okay, so Manga Bay, you know, has their own YouTube channel. So this week, if you want to go over there, they are looking at the insect apocalypse. Uh, weighing in on uh, the outlook for the planet's insects. Yes, yeah, so you can find that over on Manga Bay's own fine YouTube channel. All right. Uh, well, gee, let's go back to Indonesia where we get this sky is blue or a well, I guess sky is milky white. We have to stop saying uh, the sky is blue, you know, for when we're talking about basically as a synonym for no shit Sherlock. We have to get rid of this whole the sky is blue uh, metaphor here in the 21st century. So from the sky is a milky white headline of the week. <clears throat> Indonesia's top palm oil deforesters are the usual shady suspects. Yes, <clears throat> repeat offenders dominate this year's list of the top 10 palm oil companies responsible for deforestation in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Papua New Guinea. Yes. Some of these top deforesters are shrouded in secrecy with scant information about them publicly available. Um, anyway, I think we heard of that. How about the uh, our fellow earthling you, you've never heard of, the Tarjur? Yes, the Tarjur is just one of our many fellow Earthlings uh, that we can kiss goodbye with. <sighs> goodbye to. Okay, I, I love when 
they ask a question in a headline, are biomass and hydropower false climate solutions? That is exactly what they are as Manga Bay and anybody with a brain has been reporting for years and years that biomass and hydroelectric power making this absolutely unadulterated uh, horseshit claim that they are some sort of green, green clean energy as the United Nations continues to tout biomass and hydropower uh, as a path forward to saving the planet as part of their sustainability goals. Yes, on this episode of the Manga Bay Newscast, so they Manga Bay is really branching out, so they have a, their own YouTube channel and now uh, their own newscast. On this episode of the Manga Bay Newscast, we look at two energy-related technologies that are being promoted as climate solutions. Biomass and hydropower, which might have, yes, which might have unintended consequences that hamper their ability to supply clean energy and thus might not be sustainable at all. Um, so in the first half, they look at the uh, they look at ener renewable energy policies that have allowed the biomass industry to flourish under the guise of carbon neutrality, even though the burning of biomass, otherwise known as the burning of standing forest for energy, releases more carbon emissions than burning coal. And then they move over to... Uh, to uh, talking about hydropower. Uh, anybody swallowing this crap from the UN? Uh, anybody such as the country of Costa Rica with this greenwashing crap that uh, they have, they're saving. Anyway, guys, I, I, I just get so fed up with it. Let's move on. Uh, gee, we have another sky is milky white headline. As the Amazon rainforest unravels into savanna, its wildlife will also suffer. Imagine that. The transformation of the Amazon and Atlantic rainforest into savanna-like environments will change the makeup of both the flora and the fauna of these biomes. Um, species like primates, which depend on a dense canopy of trees to survive, could lose up to 50% of their range by the end of the 21st century. Uh, but we do have some good news. Species from the Cerrado scrubland, such as the maned wolf and the giant anteater, would be able to move in to degraded areas of the Amazon, even as their own native range is being cleared by human activity. There you go. So I guess we have some good news for the Cerrado that the Amazon rainforest is turning into the Cerrado. Guys, I'm not making this up when I uh, talk about I love it when they ask a question. This is right out of Bennett Surf's uh, riddles. Remember when you were a little kid? You know, what's big and red and eats rocks? A big red rock eater, Manga Bay, I guess with no sense of irony, asking this question, where does the name of the crab-eating fox come from? Uh, where does the name crab-eating fox come from?
anyway let's see moving along uh, you will not believe this for marine life as well as well as any other life human noise pollution brings death by a thousand cuts a new review critically examines the issue of human-made noise in the ocean and how it can negatively impact the behavior, physiology, and survival of marine animals. Um, do you think so? Yes. Okay. Um, my computer is bouncing all around. Uh, good Lord. Uh, let's see. We were talking about as nature declines, so do our fellow earthlings. How about as nature declines, so does human quality of life? Yes. Researchers working with the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services reviewed more than 2,000 studies to determine how environmental decline is affecting human well-being. The study found, quote, unambiguous declines in quality of, rel of life related to half of the categories of nature's contributions to humanity. Yes. Uh, here is the continuing debate on uh, whether mining and deforestation are leading to all of these deadly floods in Indonesia. Yes. So since the floods, you know, with all of this flip-flopping and, and finger-pointing, the Indonesian government now says it, it plans to reforest watersheds in Borneo, uh, blah, 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 and compel coal mining companies to rehabilitate their, you know, their abandoned mines there in response to recent deadly floods. Pit mines have degraded large swaths of the region's watershed, undermining the ability of the land and rivers to absorb heavy rainwater runoff. Yes. While the, you know, if you remember from last week, while the environment minister initially denied this, her office has now indicated it was aware of the problem at least five years ago and will do more to get companies to rehabilitate their abandoned mines. Yes. Even if it succeeds, however, experts degree, agree that restoring forest from abandoned mining sites is unrealistic in, in, a, in any tangible time frame. Yes. So this is uh, looking at this new coup in Myanmar and uh, wondering how this new, uh, you know, the new boss looks like the old boss is going to affect the troubled forestry sector in Myanmar. Uh, well, you better believe that the planet eaters are going to take full advantage of all of this, uh, you know, out with the old boss, in with the new boss, to ramp up their destruction. You will not believe this, guys. Brazil timber port imports may have breached 
U.S. flooring giants probation. Hmm. A new report examines serious irregularities in Brazilian timber exporter, it's whose name I cannot pronounce, revealing the unusual clemency shown to the company since President Jair Bolsonaro came to power and the American and European importers that have continued to buy from the firm in spite of its troubling practices. Mm -hmm. So they're really calling out LL flooring. LL flooring. Anyway, my computer is jumping all over the. Uh, can you guys deal with uh, a couple of uh, Corona panic uh, stories? We're going to have two Corona panic stories, so if you want to skip ahead, <coughs> we're going to start out in the Serato and then go to the Amazon rainforest. <coughs> Corona panic fails to slow agribusiness thirst for Serato's water. Between April and November of last year, the government of the Brazilian state of Bahia authorized agribusiness to pump nearly 2 billion liters, otherwise known as 528 million gallons of water every day. The spread of giant soybean plantations in the state's west threatens tributaries, floodplains, and sources of essential rivers. Uh, the large-scale irrigation poses a major threat uh, to traditional communities in addition to the environment. Um, so here's one, uh, you know, anybody who doesn't understand how the, uh, planet eaters are using the corona panic as their cover story to go into overdrive, here is a weird one, um, politicians capitalize on the Manaus, Brazil oxygen crisis to promote a disastrous highway, Brazil's proposed reconstruction of the formerly abandoned Brazil 319 highway is notorious for its potential impact on Amazonian deforestation and indigenous people. Uh, the highway would connect the city of Manaus in the center of the Amazon to the arc of deforestation in the southern part of the region, opening vast areas to invasion. Uh, the current oxygen crisis in Manaus has been a windfall for politicians promoting the highway project using the BS argument that BR-319 is needed to supply oxygen to the city. This, this is the same kind of crap that right here in Florida that these planet eaters are trying to act like we need all of these new uh, toll roads as uh, for people to escape hurricanes. All right, what's going on with uh, the news of murdered environmentalist? Indigenous leaders killed in Philippines were, quote, red tagged over dam opposition. <clears throat> the killing of nine indigenous leaders by police during an operation in the central Philippines 
has drawn widespread condemnation from environmental and human rights groups, politicians, lawyers, and Catholic bishops. Uh, supporters of the indigenous communities say they were targeted for their opposition to two dam projects in their ancestral domain. Uh, one of the projects uh, is largely funded through a $200 million loan from the South Korean government. You know, this weird shit just never ends. So at least they, they were killed and 16 arrested. So I guess that uh, these guys over in Cambodia, I guess, ought to be glad they didn't get a bullet through their head as Cambodian environmental activists arrested. Uh, this is prominent act environmental activist Ouch Lang Heng Srolls, Men Moth, Heng Run, and Chup Chiang. Yes, in uh, 2016, Ouch, I love that name, Ouch. In 2016, Ouch was chosen as a recipient of the coveted Goldman Environmental Prize for his work exposing corruption-enabled illegal logging in Cambodia's forest. And now Ouch has found himself in prison So uh, you can decide whether this is a this is a future Corona panic story. Ending tropical deforest deforestation is vital to public health. Deforestation in the tropics, mostly caused by agriculture, is driving an increased rate of pathogen spillover from wildlife to humans. Tropical deforestation is affecting not only the health of plants and animals that depend on the forest directly, but also of people worldwide through increased disease transmission, loss of ecosystem services, and accelerated climate change. The majority of global forest loss is caused by just four commodities, beef, soil, I mean soy, palm oil, and wood products. Yes, slowing deforestation will require major reforms of global ag agriculture and financial systems, as well as policies and commitments directly aimed at conserving ecosystems. Uh, and if you guys are not aware of what an airboat is, this guy is actually uh, going very slowly. This is a responsible airboater. You know, these guys are supposed to uh, have no wake at boat launches. So uh, this guy is actually being a uh, a. I, I, can I can I use the contradiction in terms responsible airboater? Don't get me. Uh, last time I had an airboat rant, I was uh, I had a cop show up at my door, so I'd better be careful uh, talking about airboats around here. Anyway. Here's, uh, go to the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea, looking at threatened seagrass. I can't believe these airboaters are actually, uh, following the rules to slow down. Good Lord. Anyway, don't get me going. Uh, good Lord, we have an airboat parade. 
I guess this is an airboat caravan. You know, guys, we're, we're, we're just so doomed. Uh, Alright, back to the seagrass. Seagrass meadows are receding across their range due to threats from climate change, the spread of invasive species, pollution, erosion, and loss of coastal habitats from dredging, trawling, and boat anchoring. Alright, uh, I do, I just have a special interest in this. Uh, showing that the newest research suggests that the Tasmanian tiger, sometimes known as the Tasmanian wolf, still survives into the 21st centuries. There have been more than 1,200 records of sightings and physical evidence um, since 19... were collected and collated by scientists at the University of Tasmania. Uh, the study challenges the accepted consensus that the thylacine went extinct. Uh, there you go. I, I honestly believe the uh, Tasmanian tiger is still around. My guess is they will probably either catch one or more likely shoot one uh, and uh, I might even make that a prediction for 2021 that uh, they will either catch or kill or run over and kill a uh, Tasmanian tiger this year to settle the argument once and for all but we need to wind this up because uh, I have two sets of hip campers coming in to Crazy Crane Campground as the rains begin. Two sets of Valentines coming in to Crazy Crane Campground and uh, I need to go get their little romantic love nest ready. So I suggest you get out there and enjoy... Uh, your own little romantic love nest this weekend. Bye, guys.